Savvy Central Radio, drawing out the best from our guests with your host, Christina Nitschman. Everybody's Home is a place for like-minded people who love their pets and want fashionable, quality home furnishings for them. Whether looking to add a little flair to your apartment or redesign a room in your home, everything in their collection is chosen for your pet's comfort and your style. Not only will you add more love and style to your home, you will help feed an animal caught in the crossfire of domestic violence through their Everybody's Pet Project initiative. Find out more by visiting everybodyshome.com or call 212-614-3239. Hello everyone and welcome to Savvy Central Radio. This is your host, Christina Nitschman. Each week, Savvy runs weekly broadcasts providing entrepreneurs and successful individuals a platform to express their dreams, hopes, lessons learned, expertise, and wisdom with the world. Our guest today is Jana Beatty. Jana loves her clients who have trained her well and is passionate about her life's work. She lives in the heart of Texas and has co-authored a book called Quintessential Style, Cultivate and Communicate Your Signature Look. It's a no-nonsense style guide for every woman. Today, Jana joins us to share how to look 10% better without spending a dime, what your wardrobe says about you, how having a wardrobe is not just about looking great but feels great, and how to dress skinny. Find out more about Jenna at makeovers, the number four, the letter U, dot com. Hi, Jenna. Welcome to Savvy Central Radio. How are you? Fantastic this evening. And you? I'm doing fabulous. I'm so glad to have you out here talking about one of my favorite topics, fashion. Tell us more about your journey and what led you to creating your business, makeovers for you, dot com. I was one of the world's first image consultants and actually started in uh, the color craze about the 80s and found out that I couldn't get my clients looking perfect from the neck down. So literally my clients built my business. If they had a need, I got the training and answered that need. But the best training I've ever had Mm -hmm. in spite of great credentials is from my wonderful clients. Mm -hmm. You know, women are so generous and so great about giving you feedback. Mm. And so they led me down this journey that's turned out to be my life's work. And I love it. And I love them. (laughs) I'm so glad to hear that. And it makes all the difference when you have a great passion and desire to jump out of bed every morning and help your clients and, and whatever your business is. Absolutely. You know, I love the expression, blessed are those who know work is a four letter word spelled L O. V-E. Oh, I like that. I like that. Someone had told me early on when I first started working in a corporate office, um, I, I said I was not having a good time. It was very stressful. And my boss told me at the time, well, that's why they call it work, because it's not supposed to be fun. And I was, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, great. I just signed up for the next 40 years of not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not what we want to hear. Absolutely. Well, you have just co-authored a new book, Quintessential Style, Cultivate and Communicate Your Signature Look. Explain a little bit about your new book. Sure, I'd love to. Well, I don't know about you, but authenticity is a really big portion of style, personal style. And we can know what's in fashion. And that isn't really my arena. Sure, I know a lot about fashion because it's the backdrop or the context within which we communicate our own signature look. But this goes so much beyond that. Over the years, as people have told me the um, benefit to using my services, I mean, I'm Scottish, so I thought it would be that it saved money and I'm always a little too busy, so I thought it would be that it saved time. But actually, what they got from the benefit is confidence. Mm. And I don't know if you've read the confidence code. I'd really recommend, you know, at least reviewing the highlights to all your women listeners. And uh, my brother said when he read the book, he found out he was a girl. So (laughs) men enjoy it too. But they said authenticity may be the linchpin to confidence. And they continue to say, when confidence emanates from our core, we are our most powerful. Mm. And, you know, 
I loved what you said about 40 years signing on because Mm -hmm. when you can be yourself, you can truly live a totally fulfilled life. Mm. And I think that expressing who we are is one of the greatest desires of our life. And I just see clothing as freedom Mm. of self-expression that helps us communicate without uttering a word. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Jana. Uh, A number of years ago, I worked in a corporate office in Manhattan in the financial industry, and I love dressing spunky, a lot of colors and bright hair and spunky haircuts. And I remember being called in by my boss and a number (laughs) of coworkers told, okay, are you Billy Idol's sister or something? Because you do not look like you work in finance. And I remember feeling a little chastised and uncomfortable thinking, well, how the heck am I supposed to dress? And I remember trying to get fuddy-duddy and getting some boring suits and feeling really, well, as you were saying, not really confident and powerful in myself because it wasn't reflecting who I really am. That is such an example. It's just a great example. And it's also very telling because just as individuals have a certain style, different industries also have a specific style. So if you looked at an alpha-based company, Mm -hmm. that would be a president at the top, then vice presidents, and it's shaped like a pyramid. Mm -hmm. And so the areas that the professions that are alpha-based are the government, the military, finance, and insurance. So you are in the top three (laughs) for conservative dress. Mm. Isn't that kind of interesting? And, you know, if you're fooling with people's money, they don't want you to get too creative. Think about it. Yeah, yeah. In a beta-based business, you think about more as a round table or a circle. And these companies don't separate people in cuticles. They drive them together so that they can share ideas and be creative. So the dress code there is naturally more creative. Mm. Well, this goes to say, Jenna, then... If you're in a certain industry, whatever it might be, and you're feeling out of sorts and feeling like the the dress where I'm wearing doesn't reflect who I really am, maybe it's also time to think about, well, where do I belong and what should I be doing and being on a daily basis? Brilliant. That's a great clue. Yeah. Yeah. Because now looking back, I could see why I didn't quite fit in the financial industry. (laughs) These things all come back to paint a very clear picture for us. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. And how can finding your signature look help you toward an overall happy life, healthy and well-being in your life? How can it help you accomplish those things? It pretty much is the difference in between feeling totally relaxed and confident and comfortable versus feeling always on your guard or not quite right, not at home. And you know what happens to a lot of people? The number one time people come to me or my services is when they're in transition. But gosh, Christina, you know yourself, life is transition. That's Mm -hmm. part of being alive. And so one of the big things I try to get people to focus on is this question. Who are you today? Mm. Who are you today? And I know a lot of entrepreneurs like to listen to you. I believe I'm correct about that. Yes. And so let's say we do go out on our own and start a new um, business or enterprise or take a new direction in life. The people around us do love us. But the truth is, when you're with them, they see you as you used to be. Mm-hmm. So one of the most powerful things you can do is dress like your new self. And this gives them the visual communication that helps have them get your message because nonverbal communication is 75 to 95 percent of the message we convey that means if i say something Mm -hmm. but i look different people are going to believe how you look versus what you say Mm. that is really awesome tips and this recalls for me back in corporate i think i told you right now that i try to fit the part go out and get fuddy-duddy suits And I was feeling really out of place. And honestly, I was feeling like an imposter. I was feeling like I don't belong here. And it was one of my friends said, you know, you can dress the part of a financial person, but add the flair of your personality in bits, like maybe um, a scarf or something, or maybe a nice pair of earrings to add the personality of who you are deeper 
down without losing where you need to be in the industry. And now when I entered into broadcasting, I then decided, okay, I want to show my persona now of being creative and a little bit fun and playful. And I decided to go for a different haircut and a red red hair in particular. And, and that kind of helped me fill the part I'm now living today. Would that kind of fit what you're saying? Well, first of all, I have to say your comments are awe-inspiring from this standpoint. Mm -hmm. So many times, how, when we get dressed and look in the mirror, it isn't about what we see. It's about how we feel. And I learned when I was doing personal shopping with clients mm -hmm. that if they grew or if their body posture changed or they got a smile on their face or they lit up, it was a total nonverbal message to me. I actually learned this through an interesting experience with a client. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about feeling, you know, and especially women, you know you feel different when you put on clothing. Mm -hmm. So brilliant for bringing up feelings. But also there's an actual language of clothes. Mm -hmm. And um, social scientists have discovered, and we've known this for decades, that when you put on a certain outfit, you take on the qualities and the characteristics of that outfit. Mm. So we can do certain things. For example, the most powerful garment in the world is? A suit? Yes. Yeah. And then it's going to go in a jacket, an unmatched suit. It's going to come down from that. And then I look at that jacket as translating softly into a cardigan, more softly into a... a yoga clothing, like as a hoodie, mm -hmm. whatever that might be. So if you need to have more respect with the people you're dealing with, or maybe even when you go in and ask for a raise, you want to put on that armor, mm. your version of a suit. We know that darker colors have more authority than lighter colors. So if you need to increase your authority, darker colors instead of lighter. We know that prints are more approachable than solids. So if you were going to a child's school to read a story, you may want to wear a print instead of a solid. A lot of this stuff is ancient information for us. Mm. For example, if you've ever seen, I know you love dogs. Mm -hmm. You betcha. If you see two dogs meet and one rolls over on its back and exposes its juggler, mm -hmm. You trust you. We know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's being more... Trusting? It's, it's not the alpha dog. It's yeah. yielding to the other. Submissive. 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 Thank you. That was a word. <laughs> and so anyway, if you have an open neckline, when you go to social situations, that's great. I had a client who worked in an office. She was excellent at what she did, but she was very uncomfortable when she got the promotion because she has a tendency to blush and her chest particularly and her neck area would get this red rash. So we had to redesign a uniform for days that were going to be a little more confrontational than she was comfortable with. And yet she needed to temper this so that she didn't alienate her former peers. Mm. So the way we look is powerful. And in quintessential style, I talk about dressing with intention. You know, every day when you get up and get dressed, mm -hmm. put on the equipment that you need for the day. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so can I ask you here, I've always been very attracted when it comes to suits. And I like wearing them when I do professional live interviews now, for sure. But I've always been attracted to the color coordinations of black and red. And you had mentioned that darker colors um, exude more of a authority. Is black and red together, is that uh, kind of a good mix? What do you think? Well, it depends. This is one of the things that I do that's really different. Uh, we could talk about the myth, the little black dress with your fashion background. Black's associated with sophistication and drama. It can also be perceived as mysterious, aloof, and menacing. Black to, when uh, human resources people were surveyed, they felt that black connoted leadership qualities, red. We know red is an adrenal stimulus. Mm. It happens to be the second most popular color in the world behind blue. Mm -hmm. And it's often used to symbolize passion, 
sexiness, danger, rebellion, but it is a color of energy. Mm. And I, I love uh, some of the pictures that I saw about you. Yeah. I know that you're really a freedom seeking being. So I love the story when you left corporate because your spirit mm-hmm. in some of your photos, the best photos of you are the most fun when they capture your spirit. And it almost looks like you're breaking out and expressing that freedom. Yeah. So red would be a color that would be energetic to support that. Mm, very good. Uh, very interesting. Wow. Now, I know many out there will listen and, and say, hey, I don't have the budget right now to really change my wardrobe. Where do I even to begin to find the perfect signature wardrobe for myself and also not break the bank at the same time? Okay, great question. See, my whole thing is, regardless of your budget or income, health, weight, size, personal coloring, there is no aspect that is prohibitive for looking your best. Mm. And when we know more about ourselves, that's the key to all of this. We've been taught a lot of myths, and there are really some basics that we can overthrow. So one of my favorite things to teach people, we'll do this for your clients real fast if you think mm-hmm. it would be your client, your listeners, if they think it would be interesting, but it's how to look 10% better without spending a dime. I love that. <laughs> so we'll cover that real quickly. And also in case I forget to come back to this, you know, even at Walmart, there's the George collection. Mm-hmm. And one time when I went into corporation, I took clothing from a box store and happened to be a silk suit in the mix and some other things. And my husband said, oh, when you go in, don't have the sack on there. Don't let them know where they're from. They'll all faint when you tell them. (laughs) My own son, after he got out of business school, he didn't have money left for shirts. So we went to the George collection at Walmart, not doing a commercial for them, but I'm just saying there are ways. If you have good taste, you can shop anywhere. Yeah. Okay. How to look 10% better without spending a dime. Mm-hmm. First, I was on the phone in conversation. It was a personal call and I saw this plant that got zapped in the weather and I was going to go outside and throw it in the trash, but I was so engrossed in my conversation. I just started picking off the dead leaves. Got so engrossed in the conversation. I came back and sat at my desk and looked out and thought, wow, it's transformed. It's a new plant. It looked new just by eliminating. Well, if you have 100 outfits, Mm -hmm. trust me, most Americans listening are going to have more than 100 outfits. And you went out and bought 10 new outfits, theoretically, Mm -hmm. you would look 10% better. Now, not necessarily, because if those outfits all make you look better and better, not just making your closet fatter and fatter, it will be true. You look 10% better. But I can guarantee, guarantee that if you eliminate 10 outfits that no longer serve you, are not up to who you are today and your current image, I will guarantee you will look 10% better without spending a dime. Mm. The power of edit. Mm. Another great exercise I have, and do this in your mind real quickly. You'll love this one. Okay. You know, I was talking about your spirited clothes and how you used to have the punky hair and everything. Yeah. Well, if you, you even have red hair, Mm -hmm. but if you went to your closet Mm -hmm. and I said to you, if you hired me to come to your closet, you said, well, where are we going to start? And I say, first, pick an outfit that looks just like you. Mm -hmm. What outfit do you own right now that looks just like you? And it's amazing. Most people who are listening probably aren't sitting there trying to decide, oh, which one should I talk about? I have so many. It's more like, hmm, Mm -hmm. what does look like me? Yeah, we never think about it. And that is the whole purpose of dressing with intention. It's not about how we look. Mm -hmm. It's about the message we send. Your back is your billboard. We are broadcasting 24-7. Wow. And and this makes me think because I know that when I've gone on dates in the past, all of a sudden, 
everything in my closet and doesn't look good enough. <laughs> it's, it's funny. You look at your closet. It's like, okay, I have to go out and get all new wardrobe here because I do not look good enough for this upcoming day. What do you think that's about? <laughs> well, clothing does have different messages. Mm -hmm. And one time I was hired, there was a financial expert. And he had a friend who had offered, he was divorced, and he had a friend who offered to help him get his wardrobe in line. But she called me and said, I'm not going to until you do his colors so that you can give me some direction. So I went to meet him. And when I went in his closet, Girl Scouts honor, he did not have a single date out. I, if he had called me and said, I don't have any date clothes in here, I would have thought, really? Come on, I'll find you six date outfits for your next six dates. No, mm. that guy was so immersed in his work. He'd lost all social contact. Even his social life was in the financial related, professional related areas. Mm. So another thing is, you know, you talked about dressing for a, a date. Yeah. So much of this is on self-perception. So we have to get in touch with that part of us we want to communicate. I'm also always fascinated by the online dating pictures. Maybe, as I said, red is passion and yeah. sexy and alluring. Well, pink is the color of romance. Mm. And I had a client saying to me, well, you know, everybody just is so physically aggressive. And I'm looking for someone to fall in love with and live happily ever after. Well, wear pink, not red. Interesting. And I, I saw a lot of those pictures way back when because my now partner, we met on Match.com. And, oh. and I don't recall what I did for my picture, but I do know a lot of them looked over-sexualized and like come hither. And I'm like, what exactly uh, is your message here? Are you trying to find a date or something else? Uh, but actually, I was looking to find a life partner and I was blessed that I did. Now, I noticed something else, Jana, that happened to me as I got older. A lot of the outfits I just truly adored in my 20s and 30s. I just don't look good in anymore. Is there a difference as you get older uh, um, to what clothes look best on you? Yay, you're dressing for who you are today. Ah. Good job. And there are some real key elements, but if you know the fundamentals, you can adjust that. Now, this is going to sound kind of counterintuitive, but I, Girl Scouts honor this is the truth. Mm -hmm. When you look in the mirror, never look at the clothing wait a minute, we're shopping, we're leaving them our money, but you don't want to evaluate the clothing. That's not what you're doing. Look at you. How does the clothing make you look and feel? So when you look in the mirror, look at you, not the clothes. Same with lipstick. I tell women, when you look, if you're trying on a lipstick, it's important to look at your skin and your eyes, not your lips. If you've been wearing the same color lipstick since you were 16 and you look in the mirror with something that's better, it's going to look shocking to you, better or no. So when you try on a lipstick, look at your skin and your eyes. The first thing every single one of your listeners would benefit from buying if they don't already have it is a full length mirror. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, for the reason you just stated, we change our body changes but also who we are changes. But without a full length mirror, you never know which shoes or earrings to wear. Wow, that is so telling. A, a number of years ago, my partner and I had gone on, we were thinking of getting married and we were. I went to try on some wedding dresses, he tried on some things and I'd always had it in my mind that I was gonna wear a tool, that I was gonna wear a big poofy wedding dress. So I, I tried them on, he loved them and I loved it, but I wasn't getting that excited in the mirror because they put you on this big platform and you get to look in this big full length mirror and I was surprised I was not excited looking at myself in the mirror, seeing me in these big poofy, <laughs> tool dresses and then it came out with this very elegant kind of chiffon dress that had a little bit of body to it but was very elegant and they just put that on me and I just felt like the prettiest gal in the universe and I would have never thought looking at the dress in the hanger that I would ever love it Bravo, good mm -hmm. find and this is what um, my co-author Sharon White just wrote a blog this week on she had gone uh, shopping with her daughter for her wedding gown. And she called me for tips before she went. And I said to her, well, everybody, if you read the articles, they're all going to talk about silhouette. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. This is what you do. Every time before I'm 
shopping with a bride or a mother of the bride or something that's really an important special occasion, mm -hmm. I would say to the bride, when you walk through the door, what are the three words you want to come into people's minds and feelings when they have their first glance at you? Mm -hmm. What three words will describe how you want to be perceived? Wow. With my own dearest friend, we were, uh, several of us were going to another city to try on gowns for her, and she could, not her wedding gown, uh, Mother of the Bride outfit, and she could have, choose anything she wanted, and so, which is kind of unique, and so just because it's my habit, mm -hmm. I just happened to mention in the car what three words will describe how you want to look that important time. How do you want to look? And she said, 40 pounds thinner. Oh, love it. <laughs> and this is what happened. What she ended up selecting was one of the most spectacular things I have ever seen her in. But I know her rather well. And if you would have bet me, I'm not a gambler, but if you would have met, bet me the mortgage on my home <laughs> before I drove down here that this was the outfit she'd end up with, I... First of all, when she agreed to put it on, I was shocked. But when I saw her and saw that she saw in the mirror what the rest of us saw, it was a done deal. Mm. Yeah. That's why I think sometimes I like what you said about looking in the mirror and seeing for yourself how you feel in, in the outfit. But also importantly, because sometimes we have ideas in our head of what we think a fashion would look best or a style would look best on us. And sometimes it's good to bring someone along that knows you to say, I'm going to pick out the outfits. Don't think, put them on and let's see what happens. Because sometimes by doing that, you'll see something you would have never dreamed of picking up and bringing to the dressing room that looks spectacular. On you. Yeah. <laughs> From my personal experience, that can be a very good thing or a b very bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. And so, you know, Oh, I could really give you a lot of stories about that one. But the main thing is, I prefer that people shop with friends and buy alone. Mm, okay. Why is that? Because sometimes I've seen women who are in delightful, fun social groups. Uh, even one of my clients, we we're in Texas, we love Dr. Pepper, puts a uh, what is that cotton candy flavor, some flavored vodka in Dr. Pepper cans so they can walk around and shop. Now, you know, that's not a good basis for a shopping decision. I'd say not, no. Yeah. And so some people also have indecision. And in that group, they can't take their time that they're in their normal decision-making process. And this is a good tip, regardless of what your decision-making process is. Mm -hmm. And like for young mothers and if someone doesn't have a lot of places to shop near them and they're on a trip or whatever, I say, bye, 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 bye. Make sure you have the return policy and the privacy of your own home when you're not tired, when you can introduce things. I have do what I call the orientation tour in the closet. Mm -hmm. Every time you buy something new, if I walked into a party, Christina, and I didn't know anybody, mm -hmm. you would introduce me. So if you buy something new, and bring it home to your closet, you introduce it around. And then while you're still enthusiastic about the purchase, you find mates and matchups and buddies and companions with it mm -hmm. right then. And this can multiply your wardrobe greatly. Mm. And at that point as well, I'm thinking, you know, you get excited when you're there, you're trying it on. Oh, it looks perfect. I love it. You get it home, you start looking at it with all of your other wardrobe and you're like, I, you're not feeling it anymore. It could be a good time to realize maybe I made a mistake and I can return it now. Sure. We don't want to keep anything that doesn't serve us. That's what I, my bottom line for shopping is this. When you shop, make your wardrobe better and better, not fatter and fatter. I will tell you the number one line in our book, we've had the greatest feedback on mm. the most, meaning the most greatest, biggest, most mm. is your closet is a river, not the Dead Sea. Mm. 
I, I love that. And I, I think I realized, I think it was two years ago, I decided to go through my wardrobe and realize what have I had in there for over a year that I have no desire to put on, that it doesn't reflect who I am today. And I started paring it down big time. Now I do that for every season. If there's something that doesn't really yes. feel right for me, I bring it to the Salvation Army and let someone have at it that can enjoy it. And because you'll, you'll hold on to something saying, I'll fit into this in two years or one year. I'll just need to lose another 10, 20 pounds and I'll be looking awesome in that and before you know it, you've held on to a pair of pants for 10 years you know i want to tell you something about uh, weight seems to be an issue with women and our bodies do change it's actually i call it hormone belly yeah well anyway we do have this natural weight gain a plateau and a natural weight loss depending on the, the decade so one time i was at an international image conference and there was a woman i I love to go to sessions every day and see how exquisitely groomed and dressed and to perfection this woman was going to be. I'm not lightly using the word exquisite. Mm. She was awe-inspiring. She was so gorgeous. Mm. I just love to watch her walk in the room. It was, it was like training on the spot. So one of the sessions I signed up for was how to dress for women who were, I think back then, decades ago, we called them queen size, it doesn't matter, but larger women. And, uh, and come to find out, a lot of larger women did not know about their body types. They just thought they were big. And that was kind of the bottom line of her talk. But I was dumbfounded when the speaker took the stage. It was this exquisite woman. Mm -hmm. I had seen her for days. It never dawned on me. She was bigger than a size... 10 or 8. Mm. Girl, honestly, I, I swear to you, that is the truth. And I'll tell you, you know, in life, words don't teach. Experience teaches. And she gave me the greatest lesson that day. I, like I said, I remember one key point out of her talk, but by golly, that was the biggest lesson I ever learned in an image conference. That it really dressed for your size or where you're at? Sure. Well, I don't want us to leave here. We're getting close to the end of our interview. I want you to let everyone know where they can find out more about you and get your book, Quintessential Style, Cultivate and Communicate Your Signature Look. Okay. To learn more about dressing to empower yourself, which feels so marvelous, go to qstylethebook.com. That's letter Q is in queen, style, S-T-Y-L-E, the, T-H-E, book.com. qstylethebook.com. Dot com. And may I offer a gift to your uh, listeners today? Oh, that'd be awesome. Thank you very much. Most definitely. Today we have a special gift for your listeners who take too much with them when they travel. You know, it's holidays. And so we want to have room for our gifts in our luggage mm -hmm. and not have to pay more for extra luggage than we did for the ticket. At QStyleTheBook.com, go to the information tab at the top of the page. There you'll find a space-saving and back-saving packing tutorial. And I promise you, this is a perfect plan to eliminate packing from now on. Oh, that I've got to check out because I love to travel. And my partner and I actually travel in a small airplane, four-seater. He's a pilot, and we could always use extra room. So <laughs> I want to thank you again for that, that wonderful tip, Janet, along with all the other wisdom you shared today. And I want to thank you again for coming to Savvy Central Radio. It was my great joy to be here. Thank you. Our Savvy Shows are being syndicated on 7 AM FM radio channels through AM FM 247. If you're away from your radio or internet, don't worry. Every Thursday at 8 PM Eastern, you can listen to Savvy Central Radio on AM FM 247 Broadcasting Network by calling 712-832-2784 from any phone. Calls have no additional cost and just use your mobile minute. So save the number to your phone, 712-832-2784.